My name is Taylor. I'm a senior certified instructor with the Tom Tom Mandang Gym Bay School, and this is Matt Henry, Yo. the director of percussion at the University of Missouri at St. Louis. That's right. And we're here to talk to you about the TTMDA, TTMDA Collegiate Instructor Certification Program yeah. that uh, we created for folks like Matt. Why did we do this? because we wanted to have Jimbei represented in the world of collegiate percussion. <laughs> we wanted to have it represented well yeah, in yeah. that world, because right, right, right now it's not represented well. You know, there's conga curriculum sure. that's been out for a long time. Historically there is, yeah. You know? And there's a couple places at universities where people have sort of focused in that area. Right. They have a little more knowledge, but as far as represented well curriculum-wise, like print, Everything. S say, for instance, for instance. <laughs> <laughs> <All right. laughs> yeah. yeah, so this is the Tom Tom and Dang curriculum uh, book. And um, this was created by master drummer Mama Dikata. And um, that's the man right there who yeah. created the Tom Tom and Dang Jim Bay Academy School 26 years ago, as of this year. Um, and uh, Matt, what did you find? You know, what, what really, when you saw this book, what, yeah. what are the things that you saw first? Uh, well, the first thing I noticed about this that I loved was every rhythm in here explained has uh, cultural background, historical background, yeah. ethnic group. You got the map and everything. The map, sort of the area where it comes from, and that's something that doesn't really exist before this. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Inconsistency. Mm -hmm. I mean, I think Fomadu had a book. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. Okay. Yeah. <clears throat> but good, good book. Good book. Out yeah, of print. Yeah. Sure, out of print, yeah. hard to get, and so. Yeah. That's the first thing I noticed. The listing of how many rhythms that were in here, plus that background information. Right. So when right. you teach it, you can actually say, hey, this means, mm, right. here's the ethnic group. This is why it's used. Right, because so the way this just, is taught yeah. is like what Matt said. you got to include the name of the rhythm, why yeah. it's played, who played it, where it's played. That's part of the basic oral history that, you know, Mamadi and all these masters that teach this, they really need that to be included yeah. in the teaching. And historically, it has not been. If we do any drumming like this at the university level, it's on a choir piece. Somebody's right. got a gym base. Somebody's doing this, right. you know. And and so, it's important. I think now, especially now, yes, yes, people yes. are playing gym more often. Gym yes. is a widespread instrument. Yes. People are getting called young percussion majors. My students all the time. Yes. Hey, we got some. We got this African piece we want to do. Can you play gym Yeah. And instead of going in and just playing Jimbe like you've never touched it before. Right. It's important also to get the technique stuff. But back to the book, right? Yeah, I mean, yeah, yeah. so I noticed this. Second thing I noticed for me though, was this matrix notation, which developed for the internet, you know, to get information out there quicker, cool, I get its use, yeah. but in a pedagogical arena, yeah. not so much. This is know? oral history that this is taught sure. from. So this is kind of like the first kind of, uh, the first shot at representing it on paper yeah. at all. On the internet, yeah, too, digitally. Yeah. On the internet, yeah. boom, right. boom, anything. You know? And I get that, and I, I think that's valuable too for certain aspects yes. of study. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. But to break into the collegiate arena, the pedagogical arena, not so much. You, you have a language time. of music that you right. are studied with, right. and that all you folks in that arena are studied with, and it's this. And that language is this. So what? My, at my encouragement, when we talked yes. about that, I was like, man, if we gotta get this program going, you gotta have this sort of Western style notation. So people like me can pick it up and be like, okay, Jimbe one, Jimbe two, Samba, Ken, Ken, Dunumba, bam, here it goes. And yep. we can choose which way to teach it at that point. If yeah, we're gonna absolutely. teach it to our students by rote. Yeah. Right? Right. With the oral right. tradition, which is what I do. Right. Which, I like them to learn. And, and I'm glad Matt does that and I encourage that. I know yeah. Mamadi would encourage that because part of this part of the experience of learning Jimbe should be not learning it 
like Western musical, yeah. you know, instruments because they're not. It's not yeah. a Western musical yeah, instrument. Yeah. So yeah. might as well embrace the whole yeah. experience to the extent you can. I mean, right. we're not in Guinea, right? You know what I mean. Sure. So do as much as we can. But the important thing about what you just said, we're not in Guinea. Yeah. You also can't use that as an excuse to be like, eh, we're not in Guinea. Oh, right, I mean, right, you know right. What I'm saying? Let's do it our way. That's why I think no, this is important. Right, right, right. Historically, right. that's been done. Yeah. And so it's great. The Western notation is in here. Now we got to place the role. Yes, yes. And I want to add one thing. Uh, Jimbe came to the Western world in the drum circle. Yeah, and sure. It's still recovering from being an instrument that is not equal to the piano, not equal to the violin, not or even equal to the not even equal to congas, yes. right? So it's like anybody thinks that they can play on a djembe, and they're playing djembe. Mm -hmm. No, big no. And part of what yeah. I love about this this thing we're doing within the university environment is legitimizing this instrument that has had a legitimate whole history and and existence. But it needs to be put in the right place so more people understand that. Yeah. So people that just kind of whack on djembe and think they're playing djembe can get a better sense of, no, I'm playing something else. Now, to play djembe, you got to do these things. Yeah. To actually play djembe and express it in the way that it is has created to be speaking. Yeah. And I think there's, I mean, what we're talking about two different sort of concepts here. We're talking about the hobbyist, mm -hmm. right? Right. And we're talking about the educational professional professional performer. Right. I mean, th there should be a different approach. Exactly. If you want to do Jim Bay in that way and buy one that's made in Taiwan or wherever, yeah. Okay. Right. That's fine. As long as you're not going out teaching other people historical context, that's the problem. We've seen right? this. Oh, sure. It happens all the time. We've got to but stop it's, this. It's not only this <laughs> subject. I mean, we're right. fighting to do it in lots of areas of education. Absolutely. You know, There's hobbyists good. in everything. Yeah. Let the hobbyists have their hobbies. Yeah. Love them. Yes. But if you're trying to teach the tradition of the instrument, whatever tradition that is, yeah. uh, it's not the yeah. same. Uh -huh. you got to learn before you teach. Right. So yeah. we talked about why. Let's yes. talk about how. Okay. So the other thing I noticed in this curriculum when I started studying, I mean, I'm really passionate about this. I've been mm -hmm. passionate about this and Afro-Cuban music for a long time. Yeah. So I've d sort of dove in a little deeper. Dive? Go? Ah, uh, you know, we're not English majors here. Okay. I, <laughs> I involved myself what he said. deeper into the study <laughs> of Afro-Cuban uh, traditions. Immersed yourself. Immersed. By going there and yeah, sure. know, seeking out right. the real. And so, and for a long time I've been doing that, playing salsa bands, whatever, but I also have a, an orchestral, mm -hmm. master's in orchestral performance, so right. I'm doing opera gigs too. So it's an right. interesting kind of balance. And I'm sure a lot of people watching this are in the same boat. Right. Right? Like, Yes, I, I want to get more into the hand drum stuff, which is why we did this. Right. So, speaking of that, all being busy playing operas, playing gigs, shows, yeah. you know, anything, wedding bands, whatever it is. Yeah. And then I think, okay, I'm going to check out the Tam Tam and Dean Jimmy Academy. I'm going to go for this certification. And so the senior certified teacher test includes this. And well, that's actually, up, that's not even the senior. This isn't the senior. It yeah. includes this. Yes. In addition to that is yeah. more. So this is... Certified. Teacher. That's the normal certification. Normal certification. Yeah. yeah. And the which there's about sixty rhythms all in all with all parts. Dunu, Sangba, Kinkini, Oral Jimbe History One, Jimbe Two, yeah. Oral History. All of that. Some solo phrases that yes. are in there. Yes, yes, some yes. Appraisement system, level system breaks, like yes. all this stuff that's going on. And for yes. me, I was looking at it like, man. I don't have the time. It's too much. It's too much. For you, right. right. Exactly. Too because much. you're doing a lot of other work in percussion already. Right. And so for my students, the important thing is that I expose them to this well, which is why this you know, curriculum is great. It's vetted. It's here. Right. But I also can't only give them this. Right. And so that's the balance. So yeah. I looked at this. We started talking yep. administration and TTMDA like, look, maybe we should have another certification program for people in the collegiate arena. Yes. Universities, colleges, whatever it is, we gotta pare this down a little bit. So yes. we did this, here's that PDF. Now we'll yes. put it up. Yes, Ding. yes. So we can talk, now as you guys are looking at this, you see that there's the entire curriculum listed just like in the book is there, right. but we've also circled some things. Right, the, the rhythms, subset that the is. subset that uh, is the TTMDA collegiate certification yes. is there. Yes. And it's less. 
significantly less, less right. than half of what you would have to do. But we went to great right. pains to make sure it was still representative. Yeah. Oh yeah, absolutely. Yeah. And we picked the rhythms, specifically some rhythms that link up well together. Yeah. Some that are relatively easy to learn, relatively quickly to get going. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Some that are more complex because of course you gotta start somewhere. Yeah. Right? So and we make sure we represented the the feels that yeah. you know exist in the world of Jimbe, because it's not infinite, but it's not just one or two. Yeah. You know? Yeah. And I think that made it possible. Yes. And by yes. that time it's like just thinking about these and I know it made it possible because yeah. I right. have the TTMDA right. certification. Yes, right? you do. <laughs> I've right. it. You know, and I'm so, going to say something about Matt. I'm so glad that he approaches uh, non-Western percussion instruments in a way to go to the source to find out how they're actually played, where they're from, find out the roots of it. I see a lot of folks that uh, maybe they're very well educated, maybe even on Matt's level of education with, with Western percussion, and they don't approach djembe in a way that really looks deeply at it. They approach it in a way where they play it. It's like secondary. They, right, it's secondary. So that's the point they of play this. play like a drum set or something right, like it's that. It's to advance this. It's advance yeah. the real of this right, right, and make right. sure we're doing due diligence with djembe in the same way that you would with Marie or drum set or yeah, timpani anything, or right. anything like that. Yeah. Yes. Right. Absolutely. So, got the curriculum. Yes. The how, the why, yes. right? How it was I'm created, right? the yeah, first exactly. one that's gotten the, the certification, Yes. how to go about doing it, right? So once you decide, okay, cool, I'd like to incorporate this for myself, mm -hmm. for my students, possibly even for the community around me, yeah. right? How do I go about doing it? What I did was I went to the Office of Multicultural Relations on campus, mm -hmm. uh, cultural diversity offices, things like that. There's research grants. And almost every university, there's research grants. Mm -hmm. And I wrote it. They gave it to me immediately. I said, look, I want to do this certification. I want to bring this guest artist in, which at that point happened to be you. Mm -hmm. Come in, do a residency. Here's the certification that I want to complete. Will you support with this amount of money? I mean, the grant proposal, and, and I mean, it'll vary. Some yeah. of them, yes. some of them, you get five hundred bucks for. Some of them, universities might be can five thousand. Can you apply for multiple grants? Sure. I mean, it just varies university right. to university. Okay. So, yeah. So, and you could do it year after year, right? I mean, this could be an ongoing project. Some of yep. the grants are ongoing. Some of them are one-offs. Yeah. The one I did for this ended up being, I think, a one-off grant. Uh -huh. um, but I also had some money to bring you in for residencies right. and all that. But the, right. the specific one about writing this and advancing myself, advancing my research, we all, I mean, at the university level, you know this, if you teach at the university, people love research. Yep. Right? It's funded. And it's funded, right? And so that's the great <laughs> yes. thing. Like, wow, okay, yeah. I'm going to do research here. My research isn't going to be necessarily writing. It's going to be honing the craft, learning about a culture right. that is non-European in descent, right. which right. we also know is extremely important in society, specifically yeah. African, yep. right? I That's mean, right. when we're dealing with these things in the history of the United States, learning about that culture, being able to teach actual facts about it, yeah. is really important. Absolutely. Yeah. So, research grants brought you in for a residency. We had a concert. So, what Matt did in preparing for this, he got his funding and everything like that, but to actually learn the curriculum and stuff like that. Most of the rhythms are in the curriculum book, not all of them, but he learned what he could from the book and then he brought me in to teach classes at his university, mm -hmm. some that were open to the public, and I taught the rhythms that were on his test. Yeah, right. So right. that he could learn them, he could review them, and that we could later in the same time, you know, in the same week or so, maybe have him test on the rhythms. And you put yeah. together a whole show and everything like that. So it was a thing where you're using uh, university resources to yeah. bring me out. Yeah. You're using re university resources to fund yeah. getting the, you know, everything. The certification. Yeah. Everything, yeah. you know. So everything is, you're going zero out of pocket, right, yeah. to get this happening. Yeah. And it's really great, and I come out, and you know, it's good for me, it's good for him, yeah. and we learn together good with his students. students. Oh my God. Exactly. Yeah. It was completely yeah. awesome, all That's good. Great. And the other thing about that is all the rhythms are in there, but some of the breaks that you need, right? some of the solo phrases. Uh, that's what I also love about this curriculum is that it gives you examples of solo phrases. Yes. It starts to talk to you. And those solo phrases shouldn't be taken as 
this is what you should play every time you solo in soli repeat. Right. They should be taken as a language of soli repeat. Right. Right. And the, so that's the big difference here. Yes. mommy has got some of these solos that have historical context, some that have been composed by him to yes. sort of match the rhythm. Right. right? The idea exactly. and the language. Exactly. And I think there's been some consternation about that. Like, you know, you can solo a lot of different ways. And when I first started soloing, right, you would smile and laugh at me because it sounded good because I have rhythmic facility. Right, right. But it wasn't the language of the gym band. And I would, yeah. I mean, that's the thing, yes, right? Yes, exactly. And that's the same thing. If you soloed in an Afro-Cuban rumba with me, I'd probably do the same thing. Right, exactly. Like, you know, I it wouldn't know the language. Good. I didn't right. study that language. And we would smile and laugh. Yeah. It was all good and have fun. <laughs> <laughs> right, but the, but the context of that, right. you know, I mean, the Afro-Cuban thing, what do you think about? Right. you got to think about these concepts, clobber. What informs your solo. What informs your solo. Right, the exactly. same thing exists with, here. With Jimbe, speaking the language of Jimbe, speaking the language of Afro-Cuban music, yeah. it, it comes from an underpinning knowledge of where the solo is coming from. Where should your solo be sourced yeah. from? Yeah. You know, what are you considering when you're playing your solo? And it shouldn't be nothing. Yeah, <laughs> you know, and it should also should not be jazz drum set. It should not I be mean, jazz drum think, set. Yeah. You know, so you know, this is part of what we teach in Tom Tom Mendang Jimbe Academy. Is not just parts, not just oral history, but language of the Jimbe, so that when you speak in the music, mm -hmm. you're speaking in a way that's connected to the source. Yeah, absolutely. And oh yeah, you know, and if ideally, if you have dancers, because we have the Dununs right here, we have Jimbe. The third part of it is dance. Yeah. It's in tradition traditionally, Jimbe doesn't exist without dance, right, without right. movement, without serving some circumstance, like yeah. the farmer or the, the initiation or the ritual or whatever. Sure. So usually Jimbe is, is is speaking to what it's serving. Right. Now, if we take it a little out of context and we don't have, we're not in the fields with the farmers, mm -hmm. but what do we do to do a good solo that, that speaks to the music? We speak with the Dununs. Yeah. We learn from Mamadi Keita, who was in the fields, sure. drumming with to the farmers, and he knows what they were doing. Sure. So that's how we learn that. Yeah. Right. You go to the source. Go to the source. And I should say too that when I've presented concerts, one of the pieces on the concert is a suite of these rhythms. Mm -hmm. Right. So djembe orchestra, we call it. Mm -hmm. But the other pieces are classical percussion ensemble pieces, contemporary percussion ensemble pieces. So this isn't, a, it, it's important to note here too that this is a part of what we do. Yes. And this curriculum is allowing me to get to access that quicker in a way that I feel ethically sound. It's about. vetted, yeah. highly credible. I mean, Mamadi Keita is one of the most revered uh, Jimbe masters of all time, and he great, he took great pains to make sure that the tradition of Jimbe, at least for his part, would exist past his life. Yeah, he's been thinking about that. He's been talking to me about that for 15, 20 years. Mm -hmm. He's been thinking about that for a long time because he knows that the way this oral histories work, if if the oral historian dies, the oral history goes it's it's gone on. with that person, yeah. and we can't have that. And I wanted to mention one thing about a word that Matt used. Djembe orchestra. What does that word exactly mean? Is it traditional djembe? So, traditional djembe exists in an area that used to be called the Malian Empire, in specific places in that area. And not every place in that area has three dununs and two djembes. In fact, traditionally, my masters tell me maybe there's one djembe fola, that person who plays the djembe for the farmer in the fields or the ritual, or whatever, and maybe one apprentice playing songbar. It's very stripped down. Yeah. So when djembe started coming up in the West, rhythms that ordinarily weren't represented in the tradition with a full set of three dununs, because they just didn't have dununs, now we're representing them with three dununs. Yeah. As a matter of fact, we started playing uh, uh, with cuckoo. Yeah. And cuckoo is a rhythm that didn't have any dununs. Yeah. Tradition was played on three djembe's in the forest of, of Southern Guinea. So. When you study this music and you put it in djembe orchestra terms, you see how the music is represented here and how it's the same music still. But, you know, to call it traditional djembe? I mean, that tradi the word traditional it's, is yeah, problematic. It's problematic. The more I've learned over the 20-some years I've been playing djembe, the less I use that yeah. term loosely. 
Yeah, you know, traditional, authentic. Hey, careful, careful, careful. Care. right, right. Careful. That's yeah. the thing. You start exactly. using words like that, and people are like, "Oh, this is a smart person." And no, no, I mean, no, no, not, necessarily, mean that, not right? necessarily, right? So, yeah. but that I mean, thinking about those things, educators like myself, and that we're hopeful that we'll take advantage of this program. Yeah. Think about those things. If they're not, they should. Yeah. They want to find an easy, quick way to make it happen. Here it is. Yes. Right? Yes. A faster way to the source. Yes. Yeah, it's great. Good. First and foremost, it benefits me as a professional. Mm -hmm. it, it sort of gives me an opportunity to sit down and focus because my life is so busy mm -hmm. that if I'm just teaching my students one rhythm or something like that, I do it in class, bam, I'm out, I'm thinking about this and that. But I have a book, I can sit down here, I can do some reading, historical context. I can focus on it, I can think, I can really sit down and think about the tone the production, you know, how I want to get at this instrument, refine it. And that's blurred over, in, or I should say not blurred over, but poured over into my professional life, even outside the university. Mm -hmm. Being respected as a hand drummer, a hand percussionist in general, right. on more than just congas, bongos. Right. Mongo, I should say, not Mongo. Right. Singular, right? So, uh, but on Jimbe. And uh -huh. so people are coming to me now, like, yeah, okay, I want to take this lesson. People that are not in the campus. Uh -huh. So giving even Jimbe classes to the community, like when we brought you in for the residency. Yes. We have a couple of public classes, some private classes. Yep. You know, I mean, there's lots of benefit here. Yep. Personally, professionally, also to the students. Right, getting the students exposed to truthful information, good, clear, clean, concise information. Yep. Which is a little sliver of all the other things you're asking, you're providing for them as a university. As a university, university. exactly. We do snare drum every week. We do some drum set. We got to talk about some small percussion techniques. Yep. They got tambourine in the wind ensemble. How do I do this? What about this triangle part? This yep. marimba piece is killing me. Okay, yep. we got to take time for right. all those things. That's why they're here. That's why they're here. And this is why I'm here, is to right. insert with them the best knowledge that I can. And you went through great pains to learn all those other sure. things. Oh, for sure. Legitimate style. Orchestra performance. Exactly. That's so, the thing. legitimately learning yeah. this as well yeah. and putting it on that level with all these yeah. other things. Sure. Yes. It's great. It's been of extreme benefit. That's why I'm hopeful that we do this promotion push and put these videos out that it rings with some people. They're like, yeah. man, yeah, that was me right. two years ago. Right. Or this year, man, I'm feeling that same thing. I'm gonna write this grant. I'm right. gonna make this happen. I'm gonna advance my students. I'm gonna advance myself, advance the community around me in the process. Yes. There is no negative. Right. I mean, as far as I'm concerned, right. what is the negative that can come out of this? Nothing, you know? Nothing. Right all benefit yeah. to the university to you to the to students. your students yeah. to the community around you right you know because you know and to the community around you especially with djembe it's a very community-based instrument sure. you're not going to have a marimba circle right with the general public right but you may go out in the general public and teach them yeah and you know let's talk about drum circles for a second yeah you know drum circles exist and they have their thing and uh it's important that people don't think that djembe exists in drum circles, and that's where it ends. Right, they don't, it doesn't exist because of drum circles. It doesn't exist yeah. because of drum circles. The fact know? that it's been embraced in drum circles, fine. That's great. That's good. Yeah. Now, it's time to move on to, to play the instrument in a way that represents its culture and its origins, and that way, when you play traditionally, you can play that. And when you play in drum circles, it'll be a lot better. Yeah. It'll be a lot more informed. Your sound will be much nicer. You won't hurt yourself. You won't hurt you. Look. <laughs> want to hurt yourself you're going to speak the language as a musician on the instrument yeah. as opposed to you know speaking like you got mashed potatoes in your mouth come on now gravy gravy some gravy too yeah. <laughs> <laughs>